Hi, welcome to Prophetic Judah International Ministries. I'm your host, Jacqueline and King. Amen. Praise God. Getting ready to do a daily devotion concerning breakthroughs. Why so many of us are stuck, you know, not getting the breakthroughs that we need in our lives. Amen. And I'm currently currently reading a book. Um, and this book is really insightful. I have read this book on more than one occasion, but every now and then I find myself having to go back and read and gain more insight concerning breakthroughs. Amen. Many of us deserve to have a breakthrough, but many of us don't have complete breakthroughs, you know, where God can really minister to our situation if we permit him, amen, and not speak word curses over our own lives, amen. We have to trust in God and believe that God will change our situation when we believe that he is a God above all gods and he's a God over the God of this earth, amen. Praise God. So I just want to go ahead and share this word and have a little daily devotion with you. (laughs) Just sit back and relax and enjoy the time that we have with God. Because daily devotion will fully equip you and strengthen you, help you to overcome some things in your life and hopefully give you the, 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 the courage, you know, the courage to face your adversary. Amen. So I'm going to give a little excerpt, you know, take something from the book that I'm currently reading, which is called War at the Edge of Breakthroughs, which is written by Dr. D.K. O. Lukoya. Amen. And um, like I said, this book is real insightful. Many people are not getting their breakthroughs. They're not getting their deliverance. Amen. So I hope this word will encourage you and strengthen you as you begin to pursue God. Amen. And take back what the devil has stolen from you. Amen. Don't let no one, not even me, hinder you from getting your breakthrough in Christ Jesus. Amen. So there are powers that do not bother people from starting a journey towards their breakthroughs. There are others that will not bother such people in the middle of their journeys to their breakthroughs. Such powers have one point where they position themselves with all the arsenals of wickedness. They wait at the edge of people's breakthroughs. Their only mission is to waste all the time and labor spent to arrive at that point. They seek to turn the joy of the people they have pursued for a long time into sorrow, just as just at the edge of breakthroughs. And now, you know, you need to really know, you know, I'm speaking from the book, but you really need to know um, what 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 is holding you back? You know, because the enemy, he has his assignments. Amen. He wants to prevent you from reaching the edge of your breakthrough. And one of them is distraction. You know, distractions and wasting your time. You know, you putting your mind and thoughts on things that has nothing to do with who you are and what you're about and where God is taking you. You know, and he's going to do that. He's going to assign wickedness, wicked powers to distract you, to hinder you from moving forward, to experience your automatic breakthrough, automatic deliverance. Amen. To inherit the promises that we have through Christ Jesus by accepting and believing Christ as our Lord and Savior, receiving salvation through the words of our confession. And every now and then when you go through your trials and tribulations, you should go back to your confession. I said this over and over in many of my teachings. Remind the devil what God has already done for you. Remind the devil that God's word is already established for you. Amen. You don't have to sit there and wallow in it. You just need to know how to strategically plan with God's promises, with his word. Amen. And be consistent with the word of God. Because God requires us to be consistent. That's the key thing. You know, the word of God says right here that we are to be consistent. We are not to waver. We are to trust in God. It says that all throughout the scriptures, uh, throughout the book of Psalms and, you know, multiple scriptures that illustrates the grace of God upon our life. But we have to allow ourselves to experience God's grace. 
You know, allow ourselves to go through the trials, allow ourselves to go through the tribulation, allow ourselves to get hurt, get wounded in order to see that God be glorified in the midst of our situation. Even if the enemy is the one that is stirring the pot, just know that God has given you authority over the one who is stirring the pot. Amen. God wants you to know that you can have your breakthrough. You can have your breakthroughs. You can have your deliverance, but you don't need to be confessing you almost did it. You almost made it halfway there or are we there yet? Those are not breakthroughs. Those are called edge of breakthroughs. God wants you to understand that every day you and I and whomever, as long as we serve him, the enemy will always oppose us. He's not going to give us peace. God gives us the peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. So I just want to share a little bit of excerpt, you know, share some stuff from out of the book so that you can really understand where I'm coming from, you know, because Satan here signs robbers, people who will rob from you, people who will do stuff to get your attention. Amen. To cause sickness and disease in your body. Amen. But the word of God says Ecclesiastes chapter 6. Uh, verse 1 and 2. There is evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men. A man to whom God have given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanted nothing for his soul. Nothing for his soul. Of all that he desired. Yet God give him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eat it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. Is vanity and it is an evil disease. The text above says it is evil disease to have wealth, riches, and things at your disposal, yet unable to eat from them. This is abnormal, ridiculous, and mysterious. It gives the impression that something is wrong somewhere. If a man has enough food in his storehouse, yet he starves and still begs for bread. This calls for serious attention in that case. The powers that work at the edge of breakthroughs are in operation. It is an evil disease to possess blessings from which you are hindered from benefiting. Evil disease, amen, to possess blessings from which you are hindered from benefiting. Amen. Failure at the edge of breakthroughs. Failure at the edge of success. Failure at the edge of miracles is serious problem. Serious problem. And the book goes on to say, I saw a vision where many people were praying. As they prayed on, the Lord was placing things in their hands. They received these things with joy. But as they were about to move, some steps forward, somebody grabbed their hands and those things fell. Ignorant of what happened in the realm of the spirit, they just kept on praying. Then I asked the Lord what the vision meant. And he said to me that what I saw is called failure at the edge of breakthroughs. Amen. Failure. And you know, when I had initially read that, part of the passage in the book I thought about Peter I thought about when Peter was being held captive and there was two soldiers sitting between him and um, the angel of the Lord had to come and wake Peter up had to literally wake him up and and he was set free and Peter went to the house where all the ancestors were and they were praying for Peter to be delivered to be set free and their prayers were answered but they they almost missed their breakthrough because the young lady that opened the door didn't believe that it was Peter standing to the door. And many of us have received from God, but don't believe it came from God. And because we don't believe, how can we receive? And many of you have missed out on your breakthroughs because you have forgotten. You have to believe in. You have to believe, number one, and two, to receive. That's how your breakthroughs get activated. So when I read this and I saw the people just kept praying, but they didn't even realize 
that they was in a spiritual warfare. They didn't even realize what the enemy had done. They only realized because of the ignorance concerning prayer, concerning deliverance, concerning salvation, concerning sal- salvation and, and worship, etc. You know, the instruments that God gives us as warriors to be militant, to be strong, to be wise, to strategically plan, amen, and keep planning. So when I read that, that's who I thought about. You know, I just wanted to share that. Well, it says right here, there are powers that do not bother people. And I just read that earlier. But there are. There are powers that do not bother people from starting a journey towards their breakthroughs. There are others that will not bother such people in the middle of their journeys to their breakthroughs. So not everyone is going to be easily distracted. Not everyone is going to allow the enemy to take away what God has given them. Amen. They recognize they are on a mission. But the enemy, when he distracts those who don't recognize they are on a mission, they are the ones whose joy is turned to sorrow. And they are the ones who are on the edge of their breakthroughs. Amen. Praise God. So we just thank God for the word. We just thank God for the message. We thank God for his deliverance. We thank God for his peace and his joy. And I hope this message really has Help someone to begin to recognize the powers of darkness and how they operate against your breakthroughs, how they hinder you. Amen. Now, yeah, of course, you're going to keep going to church. You're going to attend church services and you're going to keep praying. But when the long expected breakthrough is in sight, you lose what the enemy has already engaged in. You got to learn how to engage with the word of God to overcome your enemies. It says here, um, they let loose their wickedness and maliciousness, powers. So people start fighting against themselves. They start speaking ill, start speaking words that uh, brings bondage, you know, into their life because they didn't get the breakthrough. So they start despising the works of God and speaking things they have no business speaking. Amen. People do that. Because they don't understand that it takes their faith to continue to go on this journey to move forward. They, they don't understand that. So that's why they continue to speak wickedness and maliciousness, not only towards themselves, but towards others. Amen. They fight vehemently to hinder the breakthroughs just when they are so near. And you have to examine your heart. You know, it makes me think about a conversation I had earlier today with someone. One of the things is I had to tell them, you have to examine your heart. What's in your heart? What is it the enemy is constantly using in you that you come into agreement with him? What is it that he could find that you are constantly hindering your own breakthroughs? Amen. Praise God. So when such things happen, people only see good opportunities near to them, but they cannot benefit from them. They see joy so near them, yet they cannot possess it. They see, feel, smell, and pay even and, and may even touch the blessings, but ultimately they cannot possess them because of the operations of these wicked powers hindering people at the edge of their breakthrough. Who's hindering the people? Powers. Powers of wickedness. Malicious powers. Wicked powers. Amen. Powers that fight to hinder you from stepping into your completeness, into your wholeness. Sometimes people go to powerful services and they are blessed. They move so close to the edge of their miracles, but all of a sudden something goes wrong. Powers of wickedness in operations are responsible for such experiences at the edge of your breakthroughs. The Lord is enlightening you through this book as he's enlightening me. Amen. So that you can battle them and win the contest. And that's the key thing. When you go to war, you don't go to war to lose. You go to war to win. So why speak down on your situation? You have already already given the adversary authority over your breakthroughs oh god can't do this this is not the season this is not that it's not my time you are speaking against 
the blessings that God has already provided for you through his son, Jesus Christ. Failure at the edge of success is a terrible thing. Why? He who is almost there is not there. A man or a woman who is almost saved but is not will still go to hell fire. A landlord who almost bolted his door in the night but did not shall lose his belongings to robbers when they come in. A prisoner who is condemned to death but almost got a pardon but did not get it will get hanged. A man who was almost rescued from drowning but was not still drowned. A ship was almost saved from sinking but was not still sank. A fire was almost extinguished but was not, it still destroyed the house. A person was almost filled with the Holy Ghost, but was not, still remains empty. Almost is not there. Almost getting the answer is still wrong. Almost scoring goals, but not, will not win any match. The spirit of almost there in pursuit of good things must die in the name of Jesus. Amen. The spirit of almost there in the pursuit of good things must die in the name of Jesus. Assure yourself of victory by saying it loud and clear that the spirit of almost there in possessing good things but not must die in my life today in the name of Jesus. Just begin to confess that. Begin to confess it and command it to happen for you. That that spirit that is in your life right now, that is hindering you from possessing good things, but not must die in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak that. Amen. Begin to say that spirit of almost there that is hindering me, that is preventing me from possessing good things, but not must die in the name of Jesus. Die in my life. Die in my life. My life. In the name of Jesus. Almost means the breakthrough is so near that you can see it. It means it is so close that you can touch it. Amen. Almost is like reaching the final destination in a journey. Almost means nearly getting there. Or like the kids would say, are we there yet? But we're not there. And as long as we're not there and we're almost getting there, it's not enough. So we have to begin to confess that God, his son, Jesus Christ, has already given us a surety. He has already given us a surety for our lives. He has already given us victory. So begin to confess out loud that the spirit of almost dead in possessing good things but not must die in your life. I pray this word has helped you again and again. I pray that God will minister to you. I just wanted to do a quick devotion just to share with you and just enter into the presence of God and trust him and believe him for everything that he has already done in you. He's already done it. It's already completed. So why live in the almost? Why live in that place? Command that spirit to die in your life. Let God be the author and the finisher of your faith. There's no more almost in our vocabulary. No, we belong to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I'm your host, Jacqueline King, Prophetic Judah International Ministries. God bless you. God increase you. God multiply you. Amen. Amen.